Hello and welcome. Today we're going to discuss use of deception in human subjects research. First, let's talk about what deception is. Deception occurs when one or more elements of the research study is intentionally misrepresented or disguised by providing participants with misleading or false information. An example of this uh, is an anxiety study where participants are told to expect mild pain during the course of the experimental session. However, no painful procedures are administered. Another element of deception is the incomplete disclosure. And this is um, when investigators intentionally withheld information about the true purpose or the nature of the study. So instead of providing uh, false information, they are just um, not disclosing all the details, all of the details, excuse me. An example of uh, incomplete disclosure, participants are asked to take a quiz for research, but they are not told the research question involved how background noise affects their ability to um, concentrate. When is deception acceptable? In some instances, being told the true nature of the study can cause participants to change how they would normally respond challenging the scientific validity of the study. Deception is acceptable when revealing the true nature of the study will influence participants and bias their uh, responses. Deception can also be used when there are no other means to um, really fully accomplish the aims of the research study. There are no non-deceptive alternatives. alternatives. And then deception um, it's also important that the deception does not introduce the risk of uh, unmitigated uh, harm, such as physical, psychological, legal, social, or um, financial. When deception or incomplete disclosure is used, the participant is not able to fully consider all the elements of the study. and um, provide completely informed consent at the beginning. Um, and this is typically documented in the informed consent process. Therefore, when deception or incomplete disclosure is used, investigators should debrief participants at the end of the study to preserve their autonomy. So the debrief, uh, again, it's after the study procedures are completed. The participants are provided with the information about the use of deception or the inc incomplete disclosure. Explanation of what was misrepresented or intentionally withheld is also um, included as well. The debriefing sessions uh, really do mitigate any harm of that deception by just explaining the scientific need for the use of the technique. Um, participants should be given simple, clear, informative explanations and really should have the uh, opportunity to ask questions. So it's kind of a conversation and it's not just, here's a form, read it, um, and we're good. The IRB may require that investigators give participants the option of excluding their data from analysis. Um, and that just means that they can decide at the end after they've heard all of the facts, they can really give that um, informed determination as to whether or not they want to participate, whether they want their data that was collected to actually be used. We had recently in 2018, the regulations were updated and changed, and we call that the 2018 Common Rule. Um, and this really did provide, these regulations provided the ability to have deceptive technique used in studies that are otherwise considered exempt. So prior to the change in the regulations, anytime you used uh, deception, it could not be exempt. It had to go through the IRB review process. Um, now, that, now that it actually can. So in order to be determined as exempt, um, the risk to participants needs to be less than minimal, which is the typical um, reason that uh, studies are exempt. But it also, when deception is used, participants really need to be told of the possible deception before they consent to, to participate in the study, and that's usually done in the consent form. Um, and then the study is 
when it goes through the review process, the IRB committee actually needs to review that and designate it as exempt through a limited review process. Um, traditionally, uh, exempt studies are just, it's an administrative re review through our office and the IRB committee actually doesn't take a look at it. But now under the new regulations, if deception is involved, the IRB committee does actually review it and says, yes, this is, is um, classified as exempt. Remember that debriefing participants is important, even if the study is classified to be exempt. And then always keep in mind, use of deception must be justified and it must be approved by the IRB. IRB conditions for the use of deception must be followed. So this concludes our discussion of the use of deceit in a human subjects research. For additional information, please reach out to the IRB office. Our email is irb at utdallas.edu. Thank you.